Yeah. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? Mr. Fortin here. I'm filming this video during Reg because, as we know, you know, we're going to do, do too much during Reg. So, anyways, I figured I'd go through the classroom exercises you have on homework tonight from section, um, what do we have here? Section five, six. So, anyways, we got to this basic proportionality theorem very quickly at the end. The basic idea of this is. Um, this parallel side here will make this ratio TP to this, uh, to this uh, length here, PR, if we're thinking this smaller, this longer side of the left side here over the uh, smaller side of the left side here, that would be the same ratio as this larger side of the right side here and uh, to the uh, smaller part of the right side. Anyways, um, you can kind of trust your eyes on these problems, whatever you kind of feel like it's probably true is probably true. So if we look at this one here on this problem here, we got two segments, oops, two segments that are divided proportionally. I don't know why that thing's not working. Okay, two segments are divided proportionally. Okay, so what that literally means is that from class, our, our part to part ratio, okay, U to V, right? This, this sort of longer part to smaller part of that segment would have to be the same ratio as this longer part to a smaller part of that segment, okay? And that's just what's given to us from a definition. Okay, that's, you know, that's what we'd say by, by dividing something proportionally. So if this is two and this is one, okay? And this were three, then this would be 1.5, right? That kind of thing, okay? This would be twice as long as that or something like that, right? It's just, it would have a consistent ratio, okay? Things we said in class, things that we can do, we can move around, right? We can do a mean swap. Okay, if we know this were true, we would know that u over x would equal v over y. And what does that really mean? Okay, if we look at the actual figures, u to x, okay, so that means we can reference this smaller part here to this smaller part here, actually the larger parts, right? This larger part here to this larger part here would be the same ratio as this smaller part to this smaller part here, okay? We can do a denominator add, right? We can do a denominator add to prove things about, about the holes here, okay? So for instance, if I do x, plus, uh, if I do here, I do V plus U, okay, V plus U, I can change this numerator V plus U. And what is V plus U? V plus U is just W here, okay? W over V, okay, would equal the same thing as Z over, um, over X, for instance. Wait, Z over Y. Wait, yeah, that's it, <laughs> Z over Y, okay? Why is that, right? If I did a denominator add over here, V plus U, okay, is equal to W, Okay, and y plus x, right? Y plus x is equal to z. So here, this kind of proves that I can take hold the whole length. Okay, w here, set it over this smaller part here. That should be the same ratio as z, right? This this longer segment here, the longest the longest thing, the whole segment here over the smaller part would be the same ratio. Okay, so again, if I use two and one here, that would be three. So three over one would be the same ratio as four point five, right? If I did that earlier example. Because if I did three plus one point five, that's four point five over three, right? Would all be in that? Um, wait, three point sorry, four point five over one point five. Yeah, that would be a three to one ratio. Anyways, we got that. Okay, we can invert fractions. Okay, so you just maybe shoot for four, five, or six, that kind of thing here on a problem like this. It doesn't have to be a ton, right? But if it says several, right, it means more than a few, right? So at least four or so. Okay, we can flip fractions and whatnot here. Okay, all right. So that's number one. Here, this is more, and number two, this is more kind of looking at the basic proportionality theorem about triangles, okay? And that the idea of this is that this whole left part, okay, over this, sorry, not whole left part, this upper left part over bottom left, okay? Uh, you, if I have the definitions here, a line parallel to one side of a triangle, it intersects the two sides here. It's going to divide it proportionally, okay? So what that means is that this length here, right? If I marked this as like U, for instance, U to V, okay? And I mark this over here, okay? Equals, um, if I mark this X uh, over Y, right? Would equal X to Y, okay? So that's one here. So anyways, there are a whole bunch of true proportions that we have here that I want you guys to notice here, okay? So by, we literally interpret the basic proportionality theorem, right? And that we can set up, we know that these two sides get divided proportionally. Well, that would mean that my whole left, okay? I might do WF, for whole left or WL for whole left, okay? Two, oops, not whole left. It's this, this part, right? Upper left, this is the upper left here. So upper left to lower left, okay, equals the upper right to lower right. 
Okay, that's the that's the literal translation of this thing here. Okay, but I know that other things are true. Okay, so for instance, if I do a mean swap here, okay, I would know that my upper left, right, upper left ratio to upper right ratio. That's interesting here. This looks a little bit longer than that, but then this also looks a little bit longer than that. I'm doing a mean swap here, upper left to upper right. Okay, that would be the same ratio as the lower left to lower right. Okay, so we're going to save time in problems like these when we actually need to set up ratios in order to or figure out things about um, about shapes. So you can do it a little more easily, right? If I if I know that this to this ratio would be the same as this to this ratio, right? Rather than just like setting up like that. Anyways, you can avoid cross multiplication and use kind of like more common sense on problems like these. We might see that a little bit later. Okay, so anyways, I know this. I also know if I do a, a means a, a denominator add upper right plus plus upper oh left, God. that's not right, I won't do that. <laughs> Lower left plus upper left would equal the whole left. Okay, so whole left over lower left, over lower left, for instance. Okay, that equals the whole right over lower right. Okay, if I just did a mean swap here, I would have, or sorry, denominator add here, I would have lower left plus lower right. Okay, and then that would just equal segmentation postulate would tell us that that would just equal the length of the whole right. Okay, so then this this uh, proportion would be true. Okay, the reciprocals are true too, right? Like lower left over W L whole oh, left would equal lower right. Okay, over uh, whole right. Yes, question. Um, I have to take the okay. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. What's her name? What's your name? So I can email her just in case she doesn't email me. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, all right, cool. Hold right here. Okay, um, cool. Um, you know, I can also, so I do this with lower left, lower right before. I could do this with the upper left, upper right, right? I could I could have flipped these fractions too. Like check this one out. If I flipped, flip these ones, invert the fractions, okay? Lower left over upper left. Okay, lower right over upper right. Okay, and I did a denominator add, right? I could prove that the, the that this this is true for the for the, uh, the 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 holes to the lowers. Okay, it was true here. I can prove the holes to the uppers are also true as well. Because if I do upper left plus lower left, okay, upper left plus lower left. Well, that's the same as the whole. So denominator add here, right? The whole left, okay, over the upper left would also be in a consistent ratio with the whole right. Okay, and why? Well, do denominator add here, upper right plus lower right equals, well, the whole right, okay, that we have over the upper right, okay? So anyways, you see here, we end up with tons of proportions, and for all these, like, just use your common sense, okay? Does this look like something that would have, would have the same ratio? And if, you know, if, if you think it does, it probably does, okay? But remember, like, this is all provable, okay? Going back to, like, this one here, which is literally showing the, the side lengths are divided proportionally, okay? This over that equals this over that, well, if I knew that, I can prove all these other things that this whole side over this smaller side here equals this whole side here, the smaller side here, whole left to upper left equals whole right to upper right. And a whole bunch of other ways we move things around, right? A lot of things you move around in math, okay? So that makes it fun. That makes it challenging, right? It makes it a puzzle. And we persevere through that, okay? This one here, number five, actually, I didn't explain today at all in class. That's fine, right? You're going to get this proof uh, very quickly on Tuesday, okay? Because we have a little more we got to get through. This is the corollary, the corollary of the basic proportionality theorem. Anyways, we have three parallel lines. We have two transversals. Guess what? Those two transversals are going to be divided proportionally. Yes, it's provable. Okay, the proof is actually pretty easy. Wait, we'll kind of talk about well, why. Why is the proof easy? Well, wow, we have a we have a triangle here. Look, if I if I introduce this, I have a triangle here. I have a triangle here. Um, so this to that would equal this to that, but then also this to that would also. Anyways, we'll, we'll prove it tomorrow. Okay, that fifteen to y would have to equal ten to fourteen. Okay, or 15 over 10 would equal y over 14. We'll prove that tomorrow, okay? If you're doing this problem though here, right? Trust your instincts, okay? On a lot of these problems here, you'll be able to trust your instincts in chapter five, which is kind of nice. 15 over 12 is a two to three, ra sorry, three to two ratio, okay? 15 divided by five is three. 10 divided by five is uh, is two. So it's a three to two ratio. So it'd be the same thing over here for y, okay? Well, y is gonna equal is, it's gonna be the same three to two ratio, okay? Upper left to lower left equals upper right to lower right, okay? So three to two equals y over 14. And then you can just cross multiply and divide and get it, right? This isn't one you can really figure out in your head. Oh, actually you can, you can figure this one out in your head, sure. This is seven times larger here, 
Okay, so y has to be what? Well, y has to be 21. Okay, because 21 over 14 would be three to two, and that's what our scale factor is, okay? Make sense? You can cross multiply and divide again. Anyways, seek me out if you need more help than this. Uh, number six here uh, is suppose you want to find the length of the uh, segment on the upper left corner. There are three methods to do this. Okay, so this is this is a fringe case where you're given, okay, you're given something that is upper right, okay, and you're given something that's lower right in my geometry tattoo number two based on proportionality tattoo, um, we're given the, just the parts, okay? We have upper right, we have lower right, and then we have a hole on the other side, right? I got my hole left, okay? And if you notice here earlier, whenever I have holes, generally, when I get it, when I have holes, I'm gonna have another hole in there to set it up as a, as a proportion, okay? And that's why it might be a little harder in this situation, but you can figure it out, okay? First of all, right, if I, if I know what one hole is, to the other hole over here, that's gonna be the same ratio as like this to that, for instance. Sorry, that to this, right? 14 to whatever the hole is here is the same as that to that. And I'm guessing that's what they do here. So right, the things things you can do, okay, three, three, three methods are suggested below completed solution. Well, here, what they did is, well, if I don't know what my holes are, how can I get the hole? Okay, well, I have upper right is six, lower right is, is 10. I can, just, I can just add them together. Right, I just <laughs> here. I got I got my hole here. Okay, so this is sixteen right here. Okay, upper or hole left to the hole right should be in the same ratio. Okay, this is in a fourteen to sixteen. Right? These lengths are longer here relative to these in the same ratio. So when I say relative there, so this is fourteen to sixteen is going to be the same to x over six. Okay, fourteen to sixteen is going to divide into it. It's going to be less than one, just as if x were dividing this. Y x is smaller than six. Okay, cross multiply and divide. 16x equals, okay, six times 14 is what? Six times 10 is 60, four times six is 24, so 84, okay? And then 16 divided by 84. I don't think 16, no, 16 doesn't go into 84, so we'll use our trusty calculator. 16, wait, 84, 84 divided, oh, I took my x there. 84 divided by 16, okay, it's gonna give me 5.25. X equals five. Point twenty-five. So there's my answer using this method. Okay, five and a quarter. Okay, they also recommend this method here. Sure, I know that hole to hole equals part to part, right? In that in that setup. Okay, because they all kind of correspond with one another. I also know that this part to this part equals this part to this part. Okay, or this part to this part equals this part to this part. You have flexibility with the way that you solve these ones here. So what are they doing here? Is they know that the whole left is fourteen. Okay, so what they're doing is in algebra one, you might let you let you write a let statement. Okay, let let a certain length, a certain unknown be represented by a variable. So if I let this be x right here, okay, x plus whatever this is here equals 14, right? By the segment addition postulate. Okay, x plus this equals 14. So then the question is, what does this have to be? Well, let's do it with y. Okay, x plus, let's call this one y for a second. Okay, what is this length here? What does the lower left have to be? Okay, well, if I subtracted X from both sides, I would get Y equals 14 minus X. Okay, so what I can do is I can let this be length X right here, as long as this is 14 minus whatever, right? This, the length of this here is dependent upon how long this length is here and vice versa. Okay, so if this is taking X units away from four, the 14 that I have from the whole, then this would, could be represented by 14 less that length 14 minus x anyways you'll have to get used to that process because that's going to help you on a lot of problems later on this semester okay so now we can get this here we got flexibility it's divided proportionally i can do this x over 14 minus x okay equals 6 over 10 okay or i can i can simplify that fraction right you might as well simplify make your life a little easier deal with smaller numbers 6 over 10 simplifies to 3 over 5 okay and if you went through to solve it which you can right you can cross multiply here you'd have 5x Okay, equaling 14 times three would be what? 30 plus 42, okay, minus three X. Okay, so then you get eight X equaling 42. And is that 5.25? It is, okay, it is here. So now we solve this equation, right? We got 42 on one side, we got eight X on the other. So we'll divide both sides by eight. That front number is going to be, yeah, there we go. Okay, X equals 5.25. Okay, three minutes to go on Reg. Let's see if I can finish this video, okay? All right, so this is another way to do it here, okay? So this is, I know my length here is 14, 
But I also know, okay, that this is in a three to five ratio on that side. So uh, basic proportionality theorem means like if this is, if this to this is in a three to five ratio, then this to this is in a three to five ratio, okay? Or we might be better here, RP is down here. Three to five is the same as, well, Q, that's Q, three to five, okay? So what can you do? Three to five ratio can be represented using variables, right? Three Y to five Y, okay? So what we can say here is that, right? We're in a three Y to five Y ratio. And then you know what? Three Y plus, from the second edition postulate, three Y plus five Y would have to equal what? Okay, this is kind of some of those problems that we had in section five one. We know that it, it the length here is 14. This is three parts to five parts. So we can actually just add them together. Okay, add them together and solve for y, okay, 8, 8 y equals 15. So I get y, and that's going to help me get the upper left, okay? 15, okay, 15 divided by 8 is 1.875, so that's y. But I need three of those, okay? I need three of those to get the upper left corner. So hopefully you see that one here. That's actually a cool way of doing it. Really quick, you don't have to set up a proportion, okay? So now I'm going to multiply that by 3. And, ooh, did I do something wrong here? Oh, I put 15. I should put 14. Okay, anyways, hopefully you get the idea. People are leaving reds right now. Message me if you have any questions. I think you'll be able to explain why. Well, you know they're in a three to, three to five ratio. That's what we got. Okay, but if you have any questions, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Um,